Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Here we are with the Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe. I hope you're not getting sick of me talking about it all the time. It's such a big part of my life, but I do realize it's a tiny part of other people's lives. Um, I thought I'd do a series of videos on uh, impact tolerance, uh, maybe another video on accuracy, uh, another video on uh, long-term reliability. Perhaps I could do a video on uh, spindle tapers and how they relate to probes, a 30 national taper or British taper, a R8, 40 and so on. Maybe I could do a video on setting up the probe. If I put them all into a series uh, that's current and concise, sort of summary of the different aspects of it, it could be useful. <laughs> all right guys, cheers. The Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe is impact tolerant because if it's impacted, it has a large distance of retraction. I'm not advocating that you should do that to these probes it is quite a stressful workout having a crash but the probe will survive it if if the crash is severe enough you should check that the stylus tip is still concentric you may need to dial it back in again normally when you're setting up your work offsets or when you're probing to find the edge of your part you have this probe tip down about a quarter of an inch below the top surface you know five or six millimeters this means you can zoom around uh, and be relaxed because if you ever do crash into the work um, you could be as deep as minus Z16 before you got to the limit of the retraction zone. Well another way of looking at how impact tolerant this probe is is that I've been uh, shipping them out since uh, 2000, uh, February 2017 that's um, over 18 months at, at this moment um, and I've only had one person crash the probe beyond that retraction zone and actually require a, a replacement stylus so um, for most owners there's probably no need to stock a replacement stem as you're unlikely to ever require it well I don't want to talk too much about accuracy in this video because I want to do another video specifically on accuracy but it is relevant um, to the, in the context of being impact tolerant because being impact tolerant all things being equal give, gives this probe um, more accuracy just let me briefly explain that um, amongst these low end uh, passive probes electromechanical probes uh, they have relatively high spring pressure and when the stylus tip comes in contact with the work you get stylus flex and um, with a self-sacrificing design a uh, fragile self-sacrificing stylus that is designed to break rather than damage the internals of the probe you get quite a lot of stylus flex and that gives you pre-travel errors and pre-travel variation errors and with this type of retract probe uh, you don't have the same requirement so you can have a stiff strong stylus and um, you don't need to protect the delicate internals because you've got retraction for protection and um, you get uh, less pre-travel because you have less flex less pre-travel variation and with the high-end probes they get around this problem uh, completely differently um, they're huge money um, an associate of mine recently bought a Renishore and got it installed with the software on his high-end vertical machining center and that was 32,000 New Zealand dollars that's about 20,000 US dollars and they are highly sophisticated they have a very delicate uh, internal spring pressure which gives the probe contact a very light force which causes much less stylus flex and less pre-travel 
variation. And um, in addition to that, there's sophisticated calibration that gives spindle, they have spindle orientation, they have uh, pre-travel uh, and pre-travel variation compensation uh, software. So for various rotary positions, the uh, pre-travel variation is different with these probes, and so you need to have sophisticated software that can register the different positions and put in different compensation amounts for different directions. And these low-end machines don't have the ability to do that. They don't have spindle orientation or sophisticated uh, compensation software. And so with these low-end machines, it makes a lot of sense to have a very low amount of error in the first place. Very low pre-travel and low pre-travel variation. The problem with pre-travel variation is that you can't just enter an effective diameter for the probe tip in the tool table because the pre-travel varies from one direction to another um, and from one rotary position to another. So in order to compensate for that, you need to have sophisticated software that allows you to do that and you need to have spindle orientation as well. And so for these low cost machines, um, that's a big problem. And so that's one of the reasons why I developed this probe is the double benefit of impact tolerance and more accuracy without the calibration being required, the compensation calibration being required. I go into the subject of pre-travel and pre-travel variation back in a series of investigative uh, videos I did right at the start of this whole project, uh, back in 2015 was it, is a, um, a playlist of YouTube videos. But if you don't have time to trawl through those early videos, and they are a bit long-winded, I hope to do a video soon on the accuracy of touch probes that will summarize some of these aspects, save a lot of time. I put a longer lead on the probes now um, to accommodate various uh, different application requirements. So um, to tidy it up out the way, you can just loop a little rubber band um, on, to, on it and onto the DIN plug. Um, that way you haven't got it draping down in your work. Um, you don't really want to get it coated in cutting oil or chips, and you don't want it to snag on uh, your table or work while you're jogging around. So that's a quick and simple little way of tidying it up out the way. I recently updated my uh, version of PathPilot on my two 1100s and I see some nice improvements. This is version 2.1.4 and you can see on the uh, corner probing routines you can change which corner you want to uh, find center set work origin or the same for internal corners. That's a really nice feature. That means that you can work, you can have a stop on your vise and you can load multiple parts in and you can have whatever corner you want for your XYZ reference, this one, this one or this one, whatever your particular culture is um, and uh, that way you can just quickly find that corner with that probing routine. So in this case with my end stop, I might want to locate uh, multiple parts uh, off the front left corner. And uh, so I just park my probe there and then go up to the software. And with the graphic display, you can just choose the one that looks right. That one looks right. And uh, away we go. There we are, set. Thanks for watching guys. If you've got specific subjects you'd like me to cover in this series, drop me a comment underneath and I'll see whether I can fit that in somewhere. Alrighty, cheers.